Okay, so uh, just to address the question about uh, the reputation. So there are two things that we really do. Um, I was actually going to demo this uh, at the end of the Marshmallow demo, but I think it's, it's okay to just show it to you what Marshmallow can offer. Uh, Marshmallow has a feature through which you can actually um, not only just monitor the IP address and everything, uh, you can actually do beyond uh, just the IP address and the domain. I'm showing you a report that I've already taken here. Uh, it, it's actually giving you the complete deliverability score uh, for whatever email that you're sending out, what percentage of emails would go to the inbox and what percentage would go to spam filters. And the uh, issues right below that, uh, the content issues uh, such as the vocabulary copywriting, um, you know, if there is a problem with your content itself, whether it is a subject or the body, it would actually highlight what those problems are in the color, like a uh, red color coding. Also, it gives you the recommended words uh, and the discouraged words. So that kind of uh, gives you an overview of, uh, you know, what may go wrong uh, beyond just the domain and IP address, um, you know, with the, with the email itself. Uh, so this is a, a very important factor to make sure the, the subject in the body that your writing is, uh, uh, you know, not getting into the spam filters because of spammy words. Um, not only that, uh, sometimes if you're coding and the layout is bad, it actually could, would highlight what those problems are. And beyond that, we also track the links that you have in your uh, email and see what the quality is. Uh, if at all any link that you have in the domain is blacklisted, we would actually highlight and say, hey, it's once the domain link is blacklisted, and you've got to be careful and remove it if uh, you can. Um, and beyond that, we also look at the infrastructure. This is what I think you were interested in, on how we can actually monitor the IP address and the domain. So this is where we actually look at your uh, specific IP address and way in which we list out any blacklist if you have. That's called um, uh, blacklist RBL, and then WL is a whitelist, and any whitelist that you have. Uh, if your IP is in a good condition, this is all going to be just a blank and you're all good to go. And beyond that, we also look at your SPF record. This is, a, this is where the authentication happens, uh, the SPF and DKM and a D, DMARC. Uh, these need to be in a real good condition. Uh, we will help you with that. It's a one-time setup. Uh, but you really have to monitor this uh, constantly just because your IT team may actually just modify some of these records in which you don't know. That may actually affect your email deliverability. So you would actually uh, go through this one time set up uh, with uh, Mass Mailer uh, for all these uh, these three DMARC, PKM, and then uh, SPF. There's a, a latest uh, the standard that has come up. It's called BME. Uh, we also will help you to uh, install and set up the BB record as well. Uh, that will actually improve the deliverability. So beyond this, two things, the content infrastructure, we go to the compliance as well. If at all you have any um, links, again, they, they may have uh, certain cookies and those are bad. We would warn um, you with, a, uh, with any kind of messages that we there are messages. And uh, most important thing, the preview. So when you're sending out email, uh, you would want to make sure that the email is actually getting delivered properly. Not only that, and the format is actually looking good. Uh, so we render uh, the actual preview real time, whatever email that you're trying to send out. Um, and then we display it on various devices, how it's going to look. Uh, so you uh, scroll through this and make sure it's all looking good, at least uh, the basic our, our most popular, um, the email clients you want to take a look, whether it is Gmail, iPhone, or Outlook, Yahoo. Uh, you know, we uh, tackle all the web clients, most popular ones, the desktop clients, as well as the mobile clients, which are, are quite popular. And now, beyond this, we also look at uh, the email verification. Now, not just the format of emails, we go beyond it again. We, are, uh, we will be able to find out if there are any spam traps. Spam traps. Uh, it's never going to be 100%, but in a close to 90%, we can identify the spam traps. Any spammers you may have in your list, you don't know. Uh, we'll also identify that. And um, any email addresses that are short lived, meaning temporary email addresses, we can identify and nullify them. So, email verification is uh, you know, a big uh, task itself for the marketers. We make it simple because we've got a, a native integration to validate emails so that you can actually suppress that. Is, uh, not good. 
Um, just to go a little bit of a, a technicality behind how we actually do the uh, the authentication. Uh, again, uh, you don't have to really worry about it. We take care of all of this. We just give you the DNS names, uh, whatever the uh, domain name that you're sending out email from. We tell you, hey, you got to enter this DNS records. Uh, so you take care of the authentication. And then if you want to brand your link, most likely you would want to do that. Uh, we also give you the DNS records for the specific uh, link as well. And uh, we strongly recommend that you go to the dedicated IP address, which is actually going to improve your uh, deliverability. Uh, so we would assign a specific uh, uh, IP address, and that's what you're going to use. And that would be tied to one of your domains that you're going to send emails uh, to, uh, e emails from. Uh, so this is basically in a nutshell uh, what uh, email authentication is all about and how we really help you to uh, monitor and manage the domain and IP reputation. So that answers your question. All right. Uh, so if you guys don't have any questions, I would uh, jump right into uh, the demo here. Uh, to start with, uh, how we really uh, support any object, right? Uh, it's a very simple setup. Uh, the setup screen itself is uh, very straightforward. It's a sort of click through kind of a thing. Any object that you want to support, uh, you would want to come to email settings and then object settings and you just add whatever the object may be. It could be a standard object or a custom object. You just have to uh, select that specific um, uh, the object, and then you would uh, mention uh, what is the email that you're actually going to use, if at all is an email field. Uh, that's how you can support any standard or custom object. Um, so that's the uh, setup thing. Again, now let's just go through the demo, actually. Uh, so mass mailer is, an, uh, is a communication tool. Right now, we start with email, but we're actually going to add SMS. We're going to add WhatsApp. We're going to add uh, voice. MMS, all these uh, communication channels would be uh, available in Mass Mailer very soon. Uh, there are three fundamental or main screens that you're always going to uh, be working on. One is a list view. List views is nothing but um, a targeted list that you want to send emails to. And the template builder, if you want to build templates using Mass Mailer drag and drop editor, you can do that using our template builder. And the outreach wizard is through which you can actually send emails. Um, you you can actually send emails from campaign and also from Salesforce list view. Uh, I'll touch base on that provided we have a little bit more time left. Uh, but assume that uh, we have um, like a standalone wizard to which you can send out emails. And uh, let's start with the list views. So the way you can create list views is clicking on that button called new, uh, which will open up a, like a, a lightning uh, page here. And uh, way in which you're going to um, uh, select your target object. Uh, and then uh, you would actually enter your filter criteria as well. Let's say um, I'm going to call this as uh, September 16, uh, demo view or something like that. And then um, uh, maybe uh, let's see leads. Um, and then the filter criteria here, the section that you see here is meant for the object itself and the parent object. So you can go uh, to parent up to six levels. Uh, and then we have the filter conditions that you can apply, and also you can filter based on the child record as well. Uh, so it's kind of um, very advanced, um, uh, the list view page that we developed. So I'm going to make it very simple. Uh, I would just give uh, just the email address, and then I would um, give a very simple criteria there, and then uh, preview just to make sure we have a record. And then I would just go save it. So that kind of saves our list view. That would be our target list. And um, uh, just to touch base on the template builder. Uh, template builder, you would see there are two options in template builder. Uh, one is basically creating an email template itself. Other one is a base template. Um, just to touch base, what's the difference? If you want to create, like let's say your marketing team or somebody who is actually creating base templates, you want to give those base templates to the users so that they can modify any of the, the contents of that uh, email template, uh, the base template, and then create email template out of that base template. So that is the reason why we created this base template. Uh, again, both are uh, same functionality-wise, not much difference. It's just that internally we create uh, uh, a base template flag when you create a base template. So let's just go ahead and create a template here. It's uh, quite easy. Uh, you just have to pick what folder 
uh, you're going to create the template and then uh, select the option create new template um, and then you don't need to select the base template because you're going to create it from scratch and then let's say uh, September 16 uh, demo letter and then let's call this as uh, uh, newsletter for September 19 yep and then uh, again the merge fields are quite powerful you can actually go up to um, you can go up to uh, six levels to the parent um, that way uh, you are not just limited to uh, only the object so let's say you want a uh, first name uh, all you're going to do is select where it is and we have both lightning and classic uh, so you just pick that merge field and you're going to embed that here uh, and then com coming to the template itself, there are two things, uh, three things right here, content, rows, and settings. Uh, rows is nothing but how many uh, columns you're gonna have in each row. Um, so you can dictate that, just drag and drop uh, what you wanna do. Uh, and I'm just gonna go drag and drop some rows here. And then I would go to the content item and the first one I'm gonna pick is an image. And the second one is the divider. And then this one I'm actually gonna go make it as a, a, a text and let's make this as a video and this is going to be your uh, divider and this is going to be your social channels right and every uh, content item that you dragged and dropped will have its own uh, properties uh, for example this is an image and um, you can drag and drop uh, images you can upload it from your desktop you can import from google box um, you know dropbox kind of a thing uh, and then you can also search for free photos uh, let's go pick one of the images there and then this becomes our image and it's got its own properties uh, so you can see the width can be changed if you don't want this to be auto width you can just go like this and then just change it you can align it left and right um, center and then more options on uh, you know what should be the alternate text and what should be the url for this uh, when somebody clicks on it or you want to send an email the various options that uh, that are available and similarly for the text uh, the moment you select text, it actually uh, opens up uh, the properties for this, you know, the text color, uh, you can change the color, link color, all of that, right? Um, and also you can change the font, you can change the size and everything. Uh, let's say we uh, save this and, um, you know, that becomes your merge field, right? And the video is, again, very simple. Uh, all you just start to do is um, just pick up whatever the URL may be. Uh, the YouTube uh, or Vimeo, the two of them that we support. So you just copy paste that and that becomes your video, right? And then the social, again, it's quite easy. All you need to do is click on that. And if you don't like this color, select a different one. And what would be your uh, the links for these uh, social images? If you want to delete any, delete, add a new one. Uh, that's quite simple. All you need to do is uh, just make some modifications right here. Uh, you make sure you click on the save button because uh, work that you're doing it in the editor, you got to save that and you got to save it to Salesforce by clicking on this button and then that template gets saved um, after some time. And that's how easy it is to create a template without knowing any HTML. Now that we've got the list view, send the template, uh, we can quickly go to the outreach wizard. Again, it's a step through process. It's not complicated at all. Um, so it'll display the campaign name. This is editable. As I said, currently we support email, but we open up other channels very soon. And then you go to the next step and target audience. Uh, I think we did the uh, lead. Uh, let's just go select lead. And then um, uh, September 16 demo and go to the next step. And here you can select uh, the same email template or any other email template that you may have in your system. Uh, we display those templates, right? Uh, sorry, somebody was saying something? No. I think it just, fro it just froze a little bit or something. Uh, is everything okay? okay? Y'all still see, see everything? You still hear us? Yeah, we can still hear you. Okay, okay. All right, yeah. Uh, and then um, we have a little section here. Again, the merge fields, if you needed to add anything, again, we have a component there. And the template, uh, you can do A-B testing. 
or if you just want to have only one that's fine. We also have advanced feature called email preview test. Uh, you can enter the preview text as well. Uh, and this becomes your um, uh, template. You can always make some changes here, uh, saying, you know, uh, data, the text, whatever, right? And then you can just save this. So basically, on fly, also, you can actually edit the template. Uh, and then again, you would just go to the next step uh, once you save it. And we have an option to upload files. Uh, we, you can select it from Salesforce document attachment content, or you can upload it from the computer. Um, and go to the next step. Uh, again, this is a little advanced. Uh, as you can see, you can send it as a logged in user. Uh, you have an option to select a, a global that can be set up in a mass mailer setup. It shows that whatever global sender may be. Uh, you can also do record owner, or you can also send it on behalf of someone else. Uh, all these options are available. Um, let's say we pick up global sender, that becomes the sender. Uh, we also have the recipient uh, CC email. If you want to, like, if you have, uh, say, you know, email as a secondary email on the contact or lead, uh, and if you want to copy uh, that uh, additional email, you can actually do that. Uh, and then uh, BCC options are available. You can BCC sender. Um, you can do it once or on every email. And then uh, the send uh, delivery options, you can send it now, uh, schedule it later uh, with the date and time. Uh, this is again advanced, a little advanced. So you can select a specific email group that you want to send to. This is, a, this is called subscription group or email preference. So anyone who actually um, unsubscribed from a specific uh, uh, group, uh, they won't receive it. Uh, so you can actually, um, you know, uh, have an ability to select a group. Uh, again, IP pool is a little bit more advanced who are, uh, you know, trying to use different IP addresses for different kind of emails. You can create IP pool and then select the IP pool at the runtime. This is very important, uh, very careful about your email deliverability. Uh, any point in time, if you want to suppress unsubscribe, uh, you can do it on time. Uh, that's possible. And then finally, you can review and send uh, whatever campaign that you're working on. All you need to do is just um, go here and finish. And there is a way to actually preview email and test email as well before uh, you want to send email. That's possible. And you just go click finish, and that creates a uh, a mass mailer outreach record, which is more like a, you know, more like a campaign, but it's got all the meta information. We also store the statistics um, of any mass email that you would have sent, uh, such as opens and clicks and uh, unsubscribes. All of those details are captured uh, on this mass mailer outreach record. Uh, you can see that uh, pretty much it has all the information that you've selected earlier. Um, and then uh, also the statistics uh, would uh, get reflected. Uh, it, it gets reflected, you know, every um, uh, maybe half an hour to one hour uh, it updates. And then, uh, but we run a bad job every uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I guess. It keeps, um, you know, updating the statistics. So that's simple uh, as sending out email via mass mailers. So any questions? Questions? If you have a custom HTML templates or want to create those, is there a way to do that? Uh, yeah. Uh, so if you have, right. If you have custom HTML, you would just load them up into Salesforce. Uh, so it's not a mass mailer functionality. Uh, Salesforce is the standard email template that you have, the classic email template. That's called as. Uh, you can uh, store it there, and we we basically um, display all the email templates that you have in the specific uh, folder. So, um, yeah, we do support it. I have a question. So, um, can your templates uh, vary uh, what they display based on field values, merge field values? Uh, so the template builder itself is uh, responsive, meaning the HTML uh, that is created is responsive. It renders on any mobile device, any desktop client uh, properly. It's all tested. Is that what your question? Sorry, I mean, I may have missed it. So, so suppose you had a, a donor level that was different from you know, other donor levels, and you wanted to display a different 
graphic based on lifetime giving amounts or something like that? Oh, like a dynamic hunting. Essentially, yeah. Based on what okay. a merge fit okay. was. Uh, that feature is still not available. That's in the roadmap. That's in the roadmap. And then is there an opportunity to send text only emails? Or oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. All of these emails are coming from your own IP address, but you don't, you don't provide IP addresses. Uh, you can purchase the dedicated IP address from us. Uh, I was actually showing you uh, in SendGrid. We use SendGrid behind the scenes to send out emails. Uh, so if you own an IP address from us, uh, we would uh, assign it to a specific uh, domain. Uh, and then if needed, we can put in the auto warm up uh, state as well. And just to go into the. The original question about deliverability and reputation, uh, yeah, having dedicated IP uh, goes a long ways in helping the deliverability and helps you better uh, reputation. Yes. We have one more question here. Sure, thanks. Could we uh drip campaign okay i have to log into a different uh instance uh so the drip campaigns are uh, basically they they're based on uh salesforce process builder so process builders what's used to push out the drip campaign uh, yeah, absolutely. So we have a hook. Uh, it's kind of an Apex uh, class that we developed. So it runs off of a mass mailer, meaning you're essentially leveraging mass mailer uh, to send out emails. Uh, but the process builder is the key uh, for you to really build a process through which you can actually develop a, a drip campaign. Uh, I'll show you how. Um, Maybe one of the example drip campaigns here. So, for example, uh, you're sending out um, email. So, drip email campaign. I believe this is the one. Let's give it a try. Okay. Uh, so, you're running a drip campaign on campaign campaign member, for example. And you would uh, identify which campaign it belongs to, uh, and then you would say, "Hey, I want to my I want to invoke my uh, drip email. That's the very first one. And after some time, it could be one hour or one day, a few days, whatever it is, right? The Facebook has got the flexibility. You can uh, invoke drip two, right? And uh, the drip one and drip two are very simple." Uh, all you're trying to do is um, you're selecting the same thing, uh, the campaign member, and then you would mention that it belongs to the same campaign ID, uh, or it, it is basically a campaign member of a specific campaign. You can have additional criteria, such as, you know, uh, campaign member status is not unsubscribe, whatever criteria you may want to have. And then you would just send uh, a drip email alert to mass mailer. Uh, you would again give what is the from name, what is the from address, what is the email template that you want to use. Um, that's as simple as that. And the same thing for drip two. Uh, you would have the same kind of uh, uh, definition. So you can clone once you created one drip process. You can just go clone the drip and then just change the name. Uh, but the template ID could be a different template ID. So that's how easy it is to create a drip campaign using mass mailer and the process builder. Nice. Okay. Anybody else? Any more, any more questions? Uh, 
describes any other type of interfaces with um, other data collectors? Statistics. Uh, sorry, you were talking about uh, the mass mailer status value, such as opens and clicks and all that? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so we capture all of them in a, an object called mass mailer email status. Uh, I would just uh, kind of go through this so you can see that it's got email subjects. What is the event? What time it happened? And is it uh, related to lead or what kind of an object it's related to? All of that information gets stored right there. Uh, and then you can also uh, know what mass email it is related to because we flag this outreach record. Uh, and if it is related to your campaign, you would also know because I know it's not in this page layout, but uh, even campaign gets associated if uh, the email came from campaign. Uh, Does if you click yeah, on the sure. campaign itself, does it give you like overall stats for the campaign? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I was uh, gonna say about few things here campaign. I know we uh, may not have much time, but I'll just go open one of them. Um, I don't know if this is a demo instance. I'm not sure if the stats are getting populated or not, but I'll at least show you the field. So the campaign feature works same way. Uh, we also flag this campaign statistic right here. Uh, all of that gets stored, request, effort, process, delivered, open, clicks, and all of that gets stored right here. And this also is related to um, the uh, specific uh, mass mailer email status record itself. So you would see the mass mailer email status value. And we also log the activity. So even activity gets logged uh, for every single mass email. Uh, and sending out email from campaign is also very easy. It's not, um, you know, uh, I mean, the centralized, uh, uh, centralized, uh, the, the screen is always going to be the outreach wizard. Uh, let's say you want to send an email from a campaign. All you would do is come here, click on that campaign, new mass mailer campaign button, and that brings up a uh, scene again. It looks something similar, uh, what you saw earlier, uh, with three options. So the campaign name, and then you can just add campaign members, uh, using the list views that we already create, that you already created. Uh, it could be, you know, any list view. You can add multiple uh, lead the contact. You can just add multiple of uh, 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 the campaign members. Click on this campaign member, add campaign members button, uh, and then you keep going to the next step. And here we again bring this uh, outreach wizard because the lightning component, and you just go through the same steps what you went through. So this is how you can send an email from campaign. Uh, but you will be able to send emails only to the lead um, or contacts from campaign. Mm -hmm. All right. That makes okay. sense. So like in, in MailChimp, yeah. it, when you send a, an email, I can look at the email list and I, I can look at the email that went out and I can see explicitly who opened it. Can, can you see yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. That wasn't sure. It was just yeah. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, be before I answer the question, so same thing you can do from leads or contacts or any custom object. Uh, you can send email via mass mailer. Uh, so you just try to click on this button, send via mass mailer, and that brings up the same screen, the outreach wizard that you saw earlier. Um, you know, it's the same process. So basically, sending out email, you can do it today from three points, uh, I mean, three different places, campaign, the outreach with the tab itself or from Salesforce uh, list view. Okay? Yep. Sure. <clears throat> Can you use uh, Flow with your drip campaign Apex? Uh, you should be able to. I don't have a demo because Flow is uh, also dependent on process builder. Uh, you should be able to use Flow as well. And then this is the uh, lead that I was showing it to you earlier. You can see the email status values right here, like this, and also the activity gets stored right there. And you can see what all uh, campaigns the email uh, was from, what is the email subject, and what is the specific event, open, click. Uh, if it is clicked, we also store the specific uh, link. 
uh, what they clicked. So you can track the links as well. All right, I think that's it for us. Any other okay. questions? <laughs> let me, uh, Jim, if you don't mind, before we uh, jump off, let me just throw up a, um, a uh, oops, where did we go here? The, uh, we just present uh, just a contact screen. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, this is quickly too. Uh, pricing, this, everybody knows that we do have a, a nonprofit discounts uh, for pricing. There's uh, basically two components to the pricing the number of users, you actually have the number of emails they're actually sent out. And um, we do have some additional services or add ons, like I said, uh, additional IP addresses, the email verification, the uh, mod showing. So that's um, this is all.